we got a surprise wild card into the, the Ebony K. Williams bus driver situation. Oh, and that's right, she's also an attorney. Attorney and a news correspondent. You know, this is, this, these are these are parallel people. But I think her take is interesting. Over again, I'm here to address um, the confusion that I personally had about um, the bigotry of low expectations, um, the mediocre jobs that we're calling, or not we're, but some folks are calling um, the folks who drive buses and um, folks who are traditionally service workers. Um, and I think that sometimes, you know, as attorneys, um, we can forget about where we came from and how important those roles are. And so I'm here um, because I thought long and hard about what it meant to come from a grandmother who was a nurse, a grandfather who had his own um, electrician business and made it in the jet chat, I'll be an electrician. Um, my grandmother, Granny, who was um, an inspector for the quality control line at Boeing. My um, grandfather, Gramps, who was a Pullman porter. Um, shout out to A. Philip Randolph. And um, all of them were service workers. All of them at some point could have been deemed mediocre. And what I would say to you all as a, just as a caveat and to just lay this groundwork initially on a micro level, we to fail and at every turn we have overcome. Whether you're looking at the black women who continue to formulate and develop businesses in this country only to hit a ceiling of 70 facts. But all I'm saying is I'm doing all that I can with the gifts that I know that I have, the potential that I know that I'm walking in, and that does not beget access to a cap table, right? Especially because we know how we look, we know who we are. We're very clear about all of that. So what I would say is, um, if we are mediocre at all as, as a people, I'm just speaking very generally here. If we are mediocre at all as a people, the culture, if we're mediocre at all, it is because of the very whack ass circumstances we've been placed in and we've thrived and we've survived. And so what I would say to us is um, to avoid the Bill Cosby rhetoric, like we've seen where that's landed him, we don't have any place for that in our culture. We don't need um, to pull ourselves up by bootstraps when we, for whatever reason, have not been given the boots. We know what the reason is. So you can't pull yourself up. You can't condition yourself out of mediocrity. You have to be provided a different kind of playing field. And so I would challenge all of us to focus on equity, to focus on access, to focus on the things that change the conditioning, the current um, circumstance, the environment. Those are the things we need to focus on. And meanwhile, we need to shout out every person in our family, every person in our community that makes a difference for us that makes our has made our lives possible. There are folks in our community who were able to buy their first homes, those homes still in their families because they were in these mediocre jobs, being exceptional, doing the best they could with what they have. And everybody else who's coasting, that's up for the up to them. But we've got to be very careful with our words. So what I would tell you all is um, that we should continue to stay resilient that we can we should continue to live and exist in our power that we could sh should continue to be overcomers and conquerors and know that there is better for us and we especially will be better off if we continue to challenge the system and change the game but in the meantime we don't need to boo boo or poo poo on anybody and where they currently are where they find themselves we do not know how they got there we don't know what else they're trying to do what else they have going on for themselves that's just not our role so um, I hope that this clears it up for some of us. And this is also a great moment for black folks. You know why? It's very clear we're not monolithic. We see things different way. Language triggers us in different ways. We need to be responsible with our words and be very clear about what we're trying to communicate. So what I hope that y'all hear from me today is I stand with the sanitation worker, the bus driver, the school teacher, every my auntie who was a librarian before she passed, my uncle who was a painter before he passed, everybody who's made it possible. Yeah, so what do y'all think about that? 
Now this is something, I don't always agree with Angela Rod, but I gave, gotta give credit where credit is due. You know, for this whole Ebony K. Williams fiasco that's been going on for the past few weeks, like I think it's a watershed moment and we really do. There's a reason that it went viral. There's a reason that it keeps coming up in discussion because it's at the core of a lot of the issues we have. And, and I think it's refreshing to hear Angela Rye, somebody in a similar position as Ebony K. Williams, have perspective on that situation and to actually express themselves in a way that isn't childish, that isn't myopic. And I think it's it's brave of her to step out against her sisters, and I commend her for it. Now, she put this statement out early. You know, I'm late to getting it, but I thought it was important that it, you know, kind of let the record show that she was in this position, that she actually had something good to say about the working class men that have been working so hard to keep this country going. And, um, you know, I just thought it was interesting too. I don't know their particular relationship together. More women will listen to this instead of listening to what Ebony is saying. Although I'm seeing quite the opposite. I hope that women are at least open to hearing what Angela Rye had to say, and that there's more than one answer to this. I thought it was good. But um, anyway, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification for all uploads. This is Fawcett Media.